What's going on YouTube? So next up in our series is Registeel. Looking at its stats, while we're still as slow as a rock, pun intended, 150 base defense and special is amazing for Gen 1 purposes. And Registeel has a huge advantage over both Regirock and Slacking. And that's its starting moves. It starts with Iron Head, a base 80 power move that's super effective against rock types. So, as you can assume, the battle against Brock won't be a slogfest. And I don't battle Brock on minimum battles, I still want to level up some for what's to come later in the run, but it's only two Iron Heads to take out Geodude. And while Onyx does take three because it uses Harden, it's still an easy battle, and we level up and learn Metal Claw afterwards, which is nice. Only 10 minutes in game time to get by Brock, we can pick it up in Mount Moon where we take the Superior Fossil and the Dome Fossil, and get our Mount Moon timestamp of 26 minutes. I decide to battle Rival 2 next, and I think the extra levels will really help out with Misty when the time comes. Anyways, to the battle. Pidgeotto is the lead. It just hits me with two weak quick attacks as I hit it with a yellow zap cannon to one-shot it. Always great to hit a 50% accurate move. Abra's next, Iron Head takes out in one shot. Rattata hits us with Tail Whip and Iron Head knocks out in one shot. Bulbasaur's last, it outspeeds and hits me with Sleep Powder, then proceeds to hit me with moves like Take Down and Vine Whip, which aren't doing much damage because we resist them. We wake up, hit Iron Head, which isn't enough to one-shot, and Poison Powder poisons me. Yeah, you heard that correctly. We will see cases later in this run where an opposing Pokemon uses a move like Acid or Sludge, and it doesn't affect me. But I had to look up Poison Powder because maybe it's a Grass move. Nope, it's a poison move. Kinda like how poison Pokemon can still get poisoned from Twin Needle because it's a bug move. I guess this is the ROM's way of still Gen 1-ing in a Gen 1 randomizer. Anyway, since we've covered that, another Iron Head takes out Bulbasaur, and we can go ahead and move on to Nugget Bridge. Now I am going to heal off my poison here, and the trainers on Nugget Bridge don't really pose a problem, but one trainer I'm going to point out is trainer number 5 at the end. Now in this randomizer, the Mankey's Karate Chop is considered a fighting move since it updates the move types, and it does big damage when it hits me. And since Mankey outspeeds me, we lose this battle. And I didn't record the winning attempt, but after this battle, I decided to pick up Thunder Wave just in case I ever need it, Ended up not using it though. We can skip on ahead to Misty. Staryu is the lead. It opens up with Water Gun, doesn't do a lot of damage. I'm spamming Zap Cannon. I hit my second one, it's going to one shot it. Star Me opens with Hydro Pump, which brings me to 15 HP. I miss Zap Cannon. Water Gun brings me to 4 HP, but I hit the second Zap Cannon, and we get the Cascade Badge. We can now head to the SSN where we enter this one room to battle the one trainer, pick up TM08 Body Slam, which I don't forget to put on my moveset right away. It's going to be an upgrade over Stomp and give us an alternative move to use, just in case there is a Pokemon that Iron Head or Metal Claw isn't very effective against. And then we can take on Rival 3. And of course we'll be picking up the Gentleman Candy on our way out. Pidgeotto is the lead and goes for Sand Attack right away. Body Slam does over half, and it hits me with another sand attack as the misses start to pile on. After a third, we hit Body Slam and knock it out. Raticate is annoying because its bites can flinch me, which it does here, and I do miss quite a bit, but finally we get through and Iron Head is a one-shot. Kadabra further lowers my accuracy with not one, but two Kinesis. But by the time we finally hit an Iron Head, it's a one-shot. We level up going into Ivysaur, and we just keep missing. We're now out of Iron Head, so I switch to Body Slam. Its attacks don't do much, it's just very little chip damage, but it poisons me once again, so now I'm on a timer. Razor Leaf, due to its auto-critting, can do quite a bit of damage, more than its usual attacks, but because of poison, my timer has run out, and I lose to Rival 3. Of course we're going to try again right away, it's not like we can train up and level up or go to the Pokemon Center in Vermilion. Pidgeotto opens the battle with a sand attack again, but we do hit Iron Head and then Body Slam to finish it. Raticate can't do much to us, we hit Iron Head again. It doesn't one-shot it, but we get a retroactive potion, 
knock it out with the next Iron Head. Kadabra cooperates, doesn't go for Kinesis, Iron Head hits and one-shots it. Ivysaur is last, it poisons us, Iron Head hits, and it goes for Razor Leaf, and Iron Head hits again. So even after a sand attack, we just hit every single Iron Head. And with the rival out of the way, we can say Bon Voyage to the SSN and hello to Lieutenant Surge. Voltorb is the lead and leads off with Screech. I go for Iron Head, forgetting that it's not very effective. I switch to Body Slam and knock it out. We level up going into Pikachu. Body Slam isn't enough to one-shot it, but we paralyze it and take it out the next turn. Raichu's last, Thundershock isn't doing much, and it's going to be three Body Slams to take it down. And with the Thunder Badge in hand, we can use Fly outside of battle when we get it. But more importantly, we get TM24 Thunderbolt, which I'm going to put on my moveset right away. Goodbye Zap Cannon, hello Thunderbolt. We can pick it up right outside a Rock Tunnel, and our post-Rock Tunnel timestamp is 1 hour 16 minutes. Registeel is flying. And now we have to decide where we want to go first in the mid game. And I feel like the easiest place to go from here would be the Rocket Game Corner. There's some high money items that'll help out with vitamin shopping, and of course, we want to get Giovanni out of the way. And Giovanni's really no problem. Iron Head is able to take out both Onyx and Rhyhorn in one shot, and while Kangaskhan does pose a threat a little bit because Bite can flinch us and we're paralyzed, it's only four Iron Heads to knock it out and we make it through pretty easily. And I'm going to try to wrap up business in Celadon by taking on Erica. And I got poisoned by one of the trainers before her, so entering this battle poisoned isn't great. Victory Bell outspeeds, hits me with Razor Leaf. Iron Head looks like it's going to be a three hit KO, but because we're poisoned and Razor Leaf is doing just enough damage, we knock it out with half HP left. Tangela comes out, Iron Head looks like a three hit KO, and it hits me with Bind. While Bind itself isn't doing much damage, the poison adds up and Bind lasts for five whole turns. Iron Head doesn't knock it out, and after a Super Potion, we just don't have enough HP to make it through this one, and we lose. I decide to pivot to Pokemon Tower to take on Rival 4. We can level up some and then backtrack to Erica. And there really isn't much to say in this battle. While Pidgeotto does get off a Sand Attack, the first four Pokemon are all one-hit KOs with either Thunderbolt or Body Slam, and really the battle doesn't get interesting until the Ivysaur. I miss my first two Iron Heads as it hits me with Razor Leaf and Sleep Powder. And while Razor Leaf isn't doing much, I don't want to be asleep forever. Thankfully we wake up, and it's just two Iron Heads which thankfully hit to knock it out. Rival 4, done. There's nothing interesting that ever happens in Pokemon Tower. I did have to backtrack to Celadon to get a fresh water and also picked up Rock Slide, but we can pick it up in Silphco. And the first thing I'm going to do immediately is head to floor number 10 because there's some goodies we get there. Once we get there, we battle the one mandatory rocket here. We get the Carbos, we get the Rare Candy, but TM26 Earthquake, which is going to go in our moveset immediately. And we can just jump straight into the battle with Rival Fival. Pidgeot is the lead. It does outspeed, but it goes for Whirlwind, and it's just one Thunderbolt to take it out. Gyarados is next. It also outspeeds. Bite doesn't do much or flinch. Thunderbolt takes it out. Growlithe is next. As we level up, it outspeeds me, which is a surprise, and Flamethrower does big damage. We have Earthquake, though, to one-shot it. Alakazam could easily clean us up here. It goes for Reflect. Iron Head's going to be a three-hit KO. Reflect again, Iron Head, and Kinesis hit, but we hit Iron Head. So we're on to Venusaur. It goes for Double Edge. Doesn't do a lot, but neither does my Earthquake. I'm going to switch to Iron Head as it goes for Petal Dance. We're down to 4 HP, but we crit and win. Did not expect to win that first try. It looked like it was going to be a reset there, but I'll take it. And a trainer we've been talking about lately, who we're going to be talking about again for these runs, the Rocket before Giovanni. And while he did give Regirock some problems, his Pokemon cooperate for Registeel. It's two Iron Heads for Cubone who just went for Thrash, Drowsy is an Iron Head and Body Slam, and Marowak goes for Rage right away, so it's three Iron Heads to take it out. And now we can move ahead and take on Giovanni. And I don't anticipate this battle being too bad. Nidorino's the lead. We get a turn one guard spec and Earthquake one-shots it. Kangaskhan can be annoying. 
Its bite doesn't flinch me, Iron Head isn't doing much, its second bite flinches me, but my second Iron Head gets a more favorable range, and we knock it out with our next Iron Head. Rhyhorn is next, I go for Earthquake, it hangs on, but Giovanni goes for a guard spec, we knock it out the next turn, we level up, going into Nidoqueen, who outspeeds and hits me with double kick, that does big damage, Earthquake doesn't one-shot it, and Giovanni goes for guard spec, and we win. Had he gone for double kick, we would have lost, Gen 1 AI gonna Gen 1 AI, we can go ahead, wrap up business in Saffron by taking on Sabrina. And while we have the special stat to tank their attacks, we're not going to be outspeeding any of them. Let's see if we can get a first try victory though. Kadabra is the lead, it outspeeds with Psybeam, a crit doesn't do much, Iron Head one shots it. Mr. Mime is next, it goes for Reflect, Iron Head one shots it, it is part fairy, here's Venomoth. It outspeeds and hits me with Sleep Powder right away, I then get hit with Psybeam, Psybeam, Gust, and the final Psybeam confuses me as I wake up and I hit myself. It continues to do little chip damage as I finally hit an Iron Head, does over half, another Psybeam, and I hit myself once again, a Sleep Powder miss, and a Venomoth knockout. We level up, going into Alakazam, but probably won't survive this. Psybeam doesn't do much, Iron Head does over half, as it starts to just heal itself with Recover. I switch to Body Slam, hoping for a Paralysis, but Psywave finishes me off. And I'm going to try again before I resort to Rare Candies. Maybe we can get some better luck. Once again, Kadabra's the lead. It opens with Reflect, so Iron Head can't one-shot it. Psybeam doesn't do a lot. We knock it out the next turn. Mr. Mime also uses Reflect. Iron Head's super effective. We knock it out. Venomoth comes out again. Outspeeds with Sleep Powder, but she's going for moves like Gust and eventually Signal Beam that aren't doing much instead of Psybeam, which could confuse me. We wake up, Iron Head does about half, it's still using Gust, we can't knock it out with another Iron Head, but we can knock it out with a Thunderbolt afterwards. Alakazam is last, and it uses Psy Wave, and once again it does big damage. Body Slam doesn't do much, it's in a recover loop, but we crit and paralyze it with our next Body Slam and take it out the following turn. Five Gym Badges down. Well, almost five I should say. Let's go ahead and backtrack to Erica. And since we outlevel her Pokemon by nearly 10 levels, this one isn't a challenge. Iron Head doesn't knock out Victory Bell, but it can't do much with Vine Whip. We knock it out the next turn. We level up going into Tangela. Iron Head one shots it. Crit probably mattered. Vileplume, Iron Head doesn't knock it out, but it flinches. And yeah, not a challenge. We can head to Cycling Road and head towards Fuchsia City and I pick up this rare candy that I never seem to get, so that was pretty cool. And we can take on Koga. And with a move like Earthquake on our moveset, there's really no challenge here. We knock out Coughing number one in one shot, Muck tanks an Earthquake, but watch this. Sludge? It doesn't affect us. But we can just knock it out the next turn. We knock out Coughing number two, Weezing actually outspeeds and goes for self-destruct, which we tank, and we win. We can head through the Safari Zone and pick up any vitamins, along with the remaining HMs of the run. That is, once I make room for Surf in my bag. But once we make room for Surf and get it, we can head towards Cinnabar Island. And while I was doing this run, I thought Blaine would be quite the hurdle for Registeel, and I had planned on training against some of the trainers in Blaine's gym. And then I remembered in Pokemon Mansion, there's some scientists that give pretty good experience. Namely, the one once you drop down the hole here that has an electrode and wheezing. But let's just speed by the battle and get to the important part. When we level up after the battle, we grow to level 41 and have the ability to learn Amnesia. And if Regirock was able to learn this move, I think its run would have went a lot better. It probably would have clocked in maybe under 330. For Registeel, we're going to say goodbye to Body Slam and hello to a badge boosting move that'll help us outspeed and boost our best attacking stat and help us tank some of Blaine's attacks for what's to come. So let's just go ahead and get into the battle with Blaine. I want to set up three amnesias and hopefully sweep. I set up one amnesia, we get super potion, a second, and then Growlithe goes for flamethrower, crits, and one shots me. 
So that was obviously the worst luck I could have ever had, let's go ahead and try that again. Once again on Growlithe, I set up an Amnesia, it goes for Flamethrower, I tank this one, and I decide to just go for Earthquake, hoping one Amnesia is enough for the rest of Blaine's Pokemon, and it's not. Ponyta traps me in Fire Spin, as it hits, and hits, and hits, and hits it again when it runs out, and once again, I get knocked out. Since I was pretty close to leveling, I decided to level up on one of the trainers in Blaine's gym, and then pop rare candies until level 50. Alright, one amnesia, flamethrower, we tank that. Two amnesia, flamethrower, it's doing less. Three amnesia, no burn and no crit, and outspeed earthquake one shot, outspeed ponyta earthquake one shot, outspeed rapidash earthquake one shot, and outspeed arcanine earthquake one shot. Now all that's left is Giovanni, and Registeel is making great time, as we see our pre-Giovanni timestamp, 2 hours 45 minutes. As for Giovanni himself, well, this battle's never really too difficult. We outspeed Rhyhorn, Iron Head one-shots it. We have Doug Trio next, who's probably gonna outspeed us. It does and goes for Bulldoze, lowers our speed, Iron Head one-shots it. Nido Queen probably still would have outsped us, but it gets off a double kick, doesn't do too much damage, we go for Earthquake, and it's a one-shot. That's awesome. Crit might have mattered. Nido King probably also would have outsped. It goes for Thrash, doesn't do a lot. Earthquake one-shots it. Crit might not have mattered on Nido Queen then. And although Rhydon does withstand an Iron Head, we flinch it, and we knock it out the next turn for the Earth Badge. And now, it's time to face Rival 6. And you see before the battle, we're at 2 hours 48 minutes. Registeel looks like it's going to clock in with a great time, but to the battle. I decide to set up fully on Pidgeot with 3 Amnesias. I outspeed after 2 which is a good sign. And now the sweep can begin. You saw Thunderbolt one shot it, Iron Head will one shot Rhyhorn. We have Gyarados next, Thunderbolt will one shot it, it's looking good so far. Growlithe is next, Earthquake will one shot it. Will we outspeed Alakazam though? We don't, it goes for Psychic, it does 5 HP. Iron Head one shots it, Venusaur is last, and Iron Head does half, but we flinch it and knock it out. That's probably the easiest Rival 6 battle I've ever had in any run. But now we've got the League, and let's talk about it. Lorelei won't be a problem. I think it's going to be set up one Amnesia and sweep with Thunderbolt and Iron Head. Bruno, I'll have to set up on that first Onyx, but as long as the Hitmons and Machamp don't outspeed me, I think we'll be good. Agatha, we have high special ourselves, and although our attack isn't the best at base 75, we have Earthquake and her Pokemon have frail defense themselves. As far as Lance and the Champion go, I don't think either will be a problem. I could see the Champion possibly being one, if Arcanine or Rhydon don't get one shot, but that's a problem for future D1. For now, we're going to focus on getting through Victory Road. I did battle a few extra trainers in there, along with picking up the optional rare candy. Let's just pick it up right outside the League's chambers. We're at 3 hours 5 minutes, we're on pace to clock in probably just over 3 hours 15 minutes. We've got Lorelei first, and my prediction for her, I was correct. Set up one Amnesia, and the battle is yours. We set up once, Thunderbolt one-shots Dugong, Thunderbolt one-shots Cloyster, Thunderbolt one-shots Slowbro. For Jinx, we're going to switch to Iron Head. It fails Fake Tears and we one-shot it. And Thunderbolt one-shots Lapras. And next we have Bruno, who I thought, aside from the champion, would give us the hardest time because, well, we have a weakness to fighting attacks. But let's just see how the battle goes. He leads with his first Onyx. I know I talked about setting up before, but I just went straight for Iron Head. We one-shot it. Hitmonchan, turn 1 X Defend, Iron Head does maybe a quarter, Fire Punch does quite a bit of damage there, Earthquake crits and knocks it out, that crit definitely mattered. Hitmonlee, turn 1 X Defend, Earthquake does less than half, it goes for Focus Energy, another Earthquake doesn't knock it out, Mega Kick does very little, and our following Earthquake knocks it out. Onyx number 2, Iron Head, one shot, and last is Machamp. I go for Iron Head, does a 
quarter, but we flinch it and then crit the next one to knock it out. And next we have Agatha, and we have Earthquake on our moveset, along with Thunderbolt for Golbat, who really isn't a challenge anyway. Plus with our high special and defense, we'll be able to tank pretty much all of her attacks. And that's mainly because ghost attacks are physical in Gen 1, but Gengar number 1 hits me with a weak shadow punch, Earthquake one-shots it. Golbat comes out, goes for Swift, doesn't do a lot, Thunderbolt one-shots it. I think you see where this is going. Haunter, Shadow Punch doesn't do much, Earthquake one-shots it. We level up going into Arbok who uses Haze, Earthquake one-shots it. And the last Gengar goes for Shadow Punch, doesn't do a lot, and Earthquake one-shots it. So although all of her Pokemon outsped, we one-shot all of them. And so far, Registeel is having a pretty easy time through the league. But we have Lance coming up. And this is a battle I really could have used Rare Candies beforehand, and watching footage afterwards, I just think to myself, why didn't I do this? Gyarados leads, outspeeds and hits me with Hydro Pump, I set up an Amnesia, I now outspeed and set up a second, and we set up a third as Hydro Pump misses, and Thunderbolt knocks it out. And watching this back, I really should have just went for Thunderbolt, I go for Iron Head, doesn't knock it out, we get a Hyper Potion, maybe we'll get a more favorable range, we don't, hits me with Thunder Wave, it now outspeeds but we knock it out with Iron Head, Dragonair number 2 comes out, it hits me with Dragon Rage, Iron Head doesn't knock it out, it hits me with a second Dragon Rage, and Iron Head knocks it out. Next is Aerodactyl, it's going to hit me with Crunch, and I'm paralyzed, Crunch again, paralyzed again, Crunch crits, and Thunderbolt hits to knock it out, but 4 HP for Dragonite and we're paralyzed, it outspeeds and easily knocks us out. There is some good news though. The good news is I took my own advice and popped those rare candies. I also made the league members more consistent. Lorelei, she remained the same. Bruno, after setting up one amnesia on that first Onyx, it was a pretty easy sweep with Thunderbolt. Agatha, same thing. But can we get by Lance on the second attempt? Let's find out. So just like the first battle, I want to start out by setting up three amnesias. We get pretty lucky as Gyarados once again hits two hydro pumps and misses the third. From there, I go for Thunderbolt. We know it's going to be a one shot. Dragonair number one comes out. I go for Iron Head and now we get the one shot. So that's good. Dragonair number two, Iron Head. We don't get as favorable of a range and it paralyzes me. It goes for agility as Earthquake knocks it out. Here comes Aerodactyl. Once again, it goes for Crunch, I'm fully paralyzed, a Crit Crunch, fully paralyzed again, a third Crunch, and Thunderbolt one-shots it. As long as we don't have bad paralysis luck against Dragonite, we win. It goes for Dragon Rage, I go for Thunderbolt, our special's maxed out, and it one-shots. So second attempt, Lance. And really, I should have just gone for Thunderbolt once I set up three amnesias. Sometimes when I watch these battles back in editing and voiceover like now, I just think to myself, what the hell were you thinking? The only thing I'm thinking right now though is, all we have left is the champion. Can Registeel beat the champion on its first attempt? Well, let's find out. So the champion leads with Pidgeot, and my strategy is pretty simple. I want to set up three amnesias and hopefully sweep. It starts by glowing for Sky Attack and hitting Sky Attack, doesn't do much. Second Amnesia, it mirror moves Amnesia as I set up a third. And now, Thunderbolt, it's going to one shot, that's one down. But unfortunately, we level up going into Alakazam, so all those badge boosts for speed are gone. It now outspeeds and goes for Reflect, Iron Head does less than half. It then hits me with Psybeam, doesn't do much but it confuses me and I hit myself. It goes for Psybeam again, once again I'm still confused and hit myself again, and now we get Psychic, just no special drop, which we do get, and I hit myself again. Thankfully I snap out of it as it just goes for Reflect twice, and we can knock it out with two Iron Heads. Rhydon is next, I was kind of worried about this, Iron Head doesn't one-shot it, it hits Bulldoze, and it critical hits me to knock me out. But. Once again, there's good news. I make it back to the champion on my next attempt, and the strategy I talked about for Lance, setting up three amnesias and sweeping, yeah, I did that this time. It worked wonderfully. 
and I managed to save a rare candy to use after we defeated Lance, so now we won't level after defeating Pidgeot. Speaking of Pidgeot, I'm going to set up three Amnesias just like before. It mirror moves the first one as I go for a second, then hits me with Wing Attack as I set up a third. We now outspeed it. I go for Thunderbolt. We know it's going to be a one shot. It is. We don't level up after it now. Out comes Alakazam. It uses Reflect. And I learned from last battle, just go for Thunderbolt. It's a one shot. We have all of our badge boosts for Rhydon, so hopefully Iron Head one shots, and it does. Three down. Next is Gyarados. It's four times weak to Thunderbolt. We know this thing's gonna be a one shot. It is. Get the hell out of here. Out comes Arcanine. I should have went for Thunderbolt. I went for Earthquake instead. Thankfully, it's still a one shot. Last is Venusaur. I go for Iron Head. It does half. It charges for Solar Beam, and it's a sitting duck for our second Iron Head to knock it out, and we have defeated the champion. And Registeel more than outperforms Regirock. And this was a really fun run, and makes me excited to do Regice's run and another contender. But for the final in-game time, level 63, 3 hours 18 minutes. 3 levels lower than Regirock and nearly 30 minutes faster. For the overall tier list, I'm gonna put it 8th overall. And for the Sanquee only runs, I'm gonna put it 5th overall right behind Meganium and in front of Typhlosion. Once again, I want to thank all of you for the continued support. The channel has really blown up some since the slacking video. I'm already working on Regice's video, and even have runs in Let's Go, X and Y, and Sun and Moon planned. For total transparency, I've never played X and Y, but one of my favorite Pokemon comes from that generation, and I used it on my team in Sword and Shield. And as far as the run for Sun and Moon, while I don't know exactly how a solo run would even go or perform in those games, the Pokemon that I want to do is rather interesting in my opinion. Anyway, the Regice run will be up in two weeks. I've been thinking about doing one of those Q&As in one of the upcoming runs since we hit 1000 subs. If that's something you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments. If you're not interested in it, hey that's cool and I totally get it. I have some ideas for some members only content. I thought about redoing some of the older runs on the channel like Magneton, Mr. Mime, Kingler. I can really improve the times in those and if that's something you all might be interested, let me know. And if you have any guesses as to who the Pokemon are in the runs I want to do in X and Y or Sun and Moon, also let me know in the comments. I'm gonna get to work on Regice's video though, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.